Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is Balu here from uh, SP Tech uh, Bangalore. Uh, today we are going to deal with uh, Unit 2 of uh, Software Engineering uh, subject and uh, the session we are going to do is called as Software Prototyping. I will quickly take you through the uh, session objectives. Uh, we are going to see what is uh, prototyping and software process. Then we are going to look into the benefits of prototyping and we should also see what are the various uh, prototyping process and techniques and finally we shall conclude the session by understanding what is user interface prototyping. So what exactly is a prototype in a software? See in the earlier unit uh, we saw about uh, requirements engineering process. Now we know that understanding correct requirement from an end user is a challenge in software engineering. Uh, that is because if your requirements are not understood properly then the product what you are going to get is going to be a faulty product or it may not basically uh, comply with the requirements given by the user. So it is very important for us to actually develop a software which actually matches to the requirement of the user and for this reason we are going to adopt a functionality called prototyping. Now prototyping is an uh, basically it is a working model of a product or an information system uh, which has got a limited functionality. Now once you have a requirements gathered, now what you do is you would basically develop a prototype uh, which is actually a working model but it has a limited functionality. Now if that prototype is approved by the user, you consider that prototype for the final product and later on enhance the product as and when new requirements add in. Now here I am giving you an, uh, a brief diagram of uh, how exactly a prototype is developed. You have requirement analysis where you understand the requirements uh, from the end user. Then you do a model of that particular uh, requirement. Then using that model, you basically construct a prototype. Uh, you either do it using, uh, you do it using coding and then you do some integration on that. And finally, you deploy that uh, prototype to the customer and ask him to review the prototype. Now what the customer does, he reviews the prototype and he gives you some feedback. Based upon the feedback, you will again go and fine tune that particular prototype. Now this is the basic model of developing an prototype in software industry. Now what is the advantage of having a prototype? So first and foremost advantage is it increases users involvement in the product even before implementation. That is because once the requirements are gathered and you are giving him some prototype to the end user for evaluation. The user will be able to know what kind of software is being developed and whether the kind of product or deliverable which is being developed is actually complying to the requirements or not. So naturally doing so, it will also help you to resolve misunderstandings between software developers and users may be identified as system functions are demonstrated. Because generally I have told you in the previous uh, unit, I have showed you one picture where you had mis which will basically depict the misunderstanding of the software communication gap which generally happens right from the requirement analysis to the deployment of the software. Now those misunderstandings can actually be avoided when you are going on a prototyping model. And more importantly, since defect detection can be earlier, it reduces time and cost. Now the, since the customer is actually seeing a working product or a prototype, he can easily defect, detect the defect then and there itself and he can always come back to you and say that this particular prototype has got these many number of defects so that you can come back and you can review those defects and fix the defects and give the prototype back to him. Which means this detection of defects earlier saves you time as well as it saves you cost because when you start correcting the defects during the end of the implementation or during the beginning of the implementation of the software, it proves to be very expensive and it also helps in identifying missing and confusing functionality which is also an important uh, parameter which adds up to the benefit of prototyping. So if any functionality is missing or if there is any functionality which has been misunderstood by a developer uh, which is not complying to the requirements of the customer, those things can actually be identified using prototyping. So prototyping gives you a lot many benefits. Now there is a separate uh, process uh, which basically uh, helps you to uh, develop this particular uh, prototype. Now if you want me to summarize, I can say that prototyping is basically used to validate the requirements. 
so validation of requirement is very very important validation basically means verification of the uh, requirements to ensure that all the requirements are well understood by the customer now this prototyping has got a predefined uh, process now there are some uh, four stages here as you can see establish prototype objectives define prototype functionality develop prototype and evaluate the prototype now what is establish uh, prototype objectives every prototype will have an objective now what is an objective why is this prototype being sponsored or why is this prototype being projected now this is called as a prototyping plan now you may have to develop a prototype sometime to evaluate the feasibility of the software itself see for example now the customer comes you comes to you and he is asking you to develop a prototype for an e-commerce portal or he is asking you to develop a software for an e-commerce portal so in that case instead of developing the whole software you give him a small prototype or a working model now that working model the customer will use and he says okay i am comfortable using with this which means that the feasibility is satisfied so that means the operationally you can implement that particular prototype so like this the prototyping has got multiple number of objectives so you have to determine what is the real objective for you to actually propose that particular prototype now once you are uh, done with that you have to go to the next stage which is called as define prototype functionality now what is prototype functionality we have to specify what goes into the prototype and what does not go into the prototype now as i have told you in my previous sessions requirements can be classified into many groups you have functional requirements you have non functional requirements so non functional requirements you have different kinds of requirements like performance requirements quality requirements now when you are actually doing a prototype you only consider the functional requirements you don't consider the non functional requirements now the same shopping cart example if you want me to take now when you are doing a prototype for a shopping cart just create a screen which basically consists of all the products and the description of those particular products so when the user selects the product he should be able to see and view the details of the product in case if he wishes to actually buy that particular product he can add that product over to the shopping cart and from then onwards what happens in the shopping cart and how the money is being transferred from the bank account of the customer to the shopping cart owner so those functionalities the performance and the quality requirements need not be defined in that particular prototype functionality so that means in the functionality of the prototype you only define certain functional requirements and you can relax the non functional requirements now once you are done with that based upon the functionality you go and develop the prototype so you can develop a prototype using any of the scripting languages and once you are done with that you are going to get something called as an executable uh, prototype so once you have got the executable prototype you go and give that executable prototype to the customer so that the customer will start evaluating that prototype and he is going to give you an evaluation report now what does an evaluation report say the evaluation report says whether he is happy with your particular prototype or not or if there are any changes to be made he will suggest those changes to you so that you can come back and refine the prototype and give him the revised prototype for further evaluation and this process continues till the prototype becomes approved okay now what are the different uh, prototyping techniques we have see we have uh, three different uh, kinds of prototyping techniques we have something called as evolutionary prototyping throw away prototyping which is also called as rapid prototyping and we also have extreme prototyping but in this session we are going to only deal with the first two that is evolutionary prototyping and throw away prototyping now what is evolutionary prototyping we have seen about evolutionary model in our second session of software engineering evolutionary model basically means anything which happens through increments is called as evolutionary model for example when software is happening through increments then it is called as an evolutionary model similarly here in this particular prototyping also if the prototype happens through increments or if the prototype comes out of series of increments then we say that the prototyping is actually adopting to evolutionary model an approach to system development where an initial prototype is produced and refined through a number of stages to the final system which means you take the requirements from the customer and you start developing a 
prototype as and when the new requirements are added you keep on refining the prototype till the customer is happy now this kind of prototyping is called as evolutionary prototyping and one thing you will have to understand in evolutionary prototyping here is use this prototyping only when well understood requirements are included in the prototype and the requirements are added as and when they are understood that means this prototyping only holds good when your requirements are well understood so if there are any confusing requirements or if there are any ambiguous requirements for in such cases for this particular evolutionary prototyping may not be a viable solution you may have to go to the another kind of prototyping this is called as an throw away prototyping now here i have given you an uh, example of how an evolutionary prototype works how the model of an evolutionary prototype works to be more precise now in this case you have requirements coming from the customer now you design those requirements into your model and you build that particular prototype and after building the prototype you ask the user to test drive that particular prototype now the user will test the prototype and he will give you some feedback now after obtaining the feedback and if you if you get a feedback from a customer stating that everything is well and good you can consider that prototype as a final product you take it as a final product or the customer will give you a feedback stating that you have to make some modifications then in that case you make those uh, modifications what we call it as refinement again you give that uh, prototype for testing once again after the modifications are made the customer will once again test drive the prototype and he'll again provide you the feedback so this is an iterative uh, process which keeps on happening but once the customer gives you a clear feedback stating that yes now this prototype is 100 percent uh, uh, foolproof and you can accept that particular prototype then you can go and consider that particular prototype as your final product now this is called as evolutionary prototyping but on a contrary you have another type of uh, prototyping called as throw away prototyping remember in evolutionary prototyping uh, we can only use when the requirements are clear that means if you can really understand the requirements clearly there are no confusions but in case of uh, throw away prototyping you can consider this prototyping technique when the requirements are not clear that means when there are some ambiguous uh, requirement you will have to basically make use of this throw away prototyping now uh, what exactly is this uh, throw away prototyping so throw away prototyping as the name itself suggests when there is a requirement which is not clear what you are supposed to do you are basically going to construct a prototype to make it very clear to understand that particular requirement and once the requirement has become clear you discard that particular prototype or throw away that particular prototype which should not be considered as a final system unlike evolutionary prototype where the prototype itself is considered as a final system in case of a throw away prototyping you are not going to consider the prototype as a final system but it is only going to help you in understanding the requirement better so they should not be considered as a final system now this is something which is very important in case of throw away prototyping now let me uh, give you an example what exactly is a throw away prototyping let's say that you have a text file now the requirement says that you have a text file the text file have cost two columns that is first name and last name now the requirement is you'll have to read the contents of this particular text file into a program now in this case uh, how are you going to read the content of a text file into a program so the prototype would say that uh, uh, the first name and last name should be delimited or should be separated by a semicolon take those first name and last name put it in an array and then further process it in the file using some, any of the programming techniques now this has given you a solution now this is called as a prototype once the solution is got you can just throw away that particular prototype so this kind of a technique is called as throw away prototyping now there is an uh, now generally a prototype is actually used not only for uh, feasibility analysis and uh, uh, not only for uh, evaluating the uh, other kind of functional requirements but the prototype is generally used for creating user interfaces now when you are using a uh, prototype for creating a user interface so we call that as an user interface prototyping now what is an user interface now we have uh, seen user interfaces in our day to day life so if you want me to give a classical definition of an user interface it's very simple it's a junction between user and a computer application now you have facebook now most of us have used uh, facebook in our day to day life now to enter into the facebook you'll have to give a username and a password 
But the moment you give username and password and click on login, you basically log on to your Facebook account. So we can call this portion as an user interface. Now, how did you design this? Now, generally Facebook also would have done something called as prototyping before they actually created this kind of a login screen and that kind of a prototyping what they would have done is called as an user interface prototyping. Now, as you can see from the slide here, user interface prototyping is an iterative development technique in which users are actively involved in mocking up of the UI for the system. Now, it means when you are actually doing a process of user interface prototyping, we bring in all the end users of that particular system and will also along with the end users will create a mockup of the UI design. Now, what is the meaning of a mockup? Mockup is nothing but a replica of that particular UI design. And if all of us are convinced with the UI design, both the end users and the system developers, once they are convinced with the user design, then we go ahead and implement that particular UI or the user interface. Now, the user interface prototype is built early before the whole system is analyzed, designed and implemented. That means it starts in the initial stages where you are going to analyze and start building the user interfaces. Now, in order to actually uh, do this user interface prototyping, we follow two stages. That means there are two stages in which uh, uh, user interface prototyping are developed. The first stage is called as the usage of a storyboard, which means develop paper prototypes which are mock-ups of screen designs and walking the, through these with the end users. Now, we call them as storyboards. Now, as you can see from the uh, picture here, now uh, this is a basically a prototype uh, which is actually developed for a college automation system. Now, you can see here, all these are actually written on piece of papers. Now, you have a home page, now you have a text box here. Then uh, from the home page, you go to the page one, which is called as a about page. Here you may have a small picture, maybe the picture of your principal and some content uh, beside him. Then you have academics where you have list of courses. Then you may have some page where there is list of, uh, you know, subjects of each course then uh, some examination details like this. Now, all these are, you know, small, small, small papers where you are going to emulate or you are going to mock up the screen design. Now, once the screen design is uh, complete, it is actually on a paper. Actually, you are not implemented anything on a computer system so far. Once you are done with this, then you can go ahead and discuss this with the end user and finally implement the UI screen on your system. So, now this is called as story boarding. Okay. So, the first uh, stage in user interface prototyping is development of storyboards. Now, once the storyboards are developed, what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to take the requirements from the customer, develop the storyboards and make the customer walk through this particular storyboard. What is the meaning of walking through the uh, storyboard? Making the customer understand like what is that UI design you are proposing, how the screens are going to look like is calling uh, is we call it as walking through once you are done with that and once the customer is happy with your uh, ui design then you go and uh, implement the second stage which is called as an implement a software prototype of interface design that means whatever you have done in the previous stage it is all on the uh, paper it is on the drawing board now from the drawing board you have to basically convert that into a working model so that means those screen, those screen designs has to be really implemented. Now, how do you implement those screen designs? Either using a script driven approach. That means you have some programming languages like VBScript or JavaScript where you can implement that particular uh, screens or using visual programming languages like VB.NET, ASP.NET, etc. Or even on internet based prototyping, something like using HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and other internet programming languages. Now, using uh, the these uh, kind of technology will help you to uh, design and implement a very beautiful screen designs or user interfaces. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you for uh, watching this uh, particular uh, session. Uh, I will see you soon on the uh, next session. Uh, please subscribe our, to our channel and also don't forget us to like on our Facebook page, SPTech Thank you and take care.